Welcome to the Words to Empower television broadcast, featuring Frank and Jackie Stewart, pastor and first lady of the Axe Ministry. And now, Frank and Jackie Stewart. Welcome back to the Words to Empower broadcast with Pastor Frank and Lady Jacqueline. I'll be your host today. We're so glad you have joined us on today. We're going to be diving into and discussing and talking about being present. We have a few scriptures we want to deal with today and the subject matter that we want to discuss on today's broadcast will deal with us as the children of God, us as the people of God. Um, being present and you're wondering what do you mean by being present um, when you were in school um, roll call went on and you either raised your hand or or when your name was called you said present I mean which signified and notified the teacher that you were here but we want to talk about being present mentally emotionally spiritually psychologically being, spirit, being spiritually present in every area and aspect of our lives because sometimes our bodies can be in a place, but our thoughts and our minds and our, our hearts are somewhere totally different. And so we want you to join us today as we dive into the Word of God. First, let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 43. I want to read this in the New King James Version, and then immediately afterwards, let's go to the Message Bible for this same passage of Scripture to see it broken down into our modern vernacular, how we normally talk in our day and time. So in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 19, the word of the Lord reads, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is the, the prophet Isaiah speaking and prophesying about what God says he's going to do. And in the Message Bible, this same passage of scripture reads, Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert and rivers in the, bad, in the badlands. So he's, he's prophesying about the coming of the Holy Spirit and what God is going to do in our lives. And he's prophesying about... I need you to understand that something new is about to happen. We've been talking in the ministry about something significant is about to happen to me before the end of this year. And you have to be the prophet of your own life. You have to speak things into existence. You have to say what's going to happen in your life and in your situations, in your circumstances, in the lives and surrounding your children and your family. And so, Isaiah begins to speak here and say, forget about what's happened in the past. He's saying, now we have tenses, we have um, places in life. It could be our past, it can be our present, and it can be our future. And he's saying, don't get stuck in your past. Things happen to us. Life happens to many of us. And things in our past that we felt like would destroy us, we felt like it was the end of us, things that happened to us that brought us down, made us sad, made us discouraged, made us want to throw up our hands and give up and quit. There are things that have happened in our past. And God is giving us a word on today telling us, do not get stuck in your past. It doesn't matter what has happened. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you have done. God's saying, do not get stuck in your past. And you say, well, that's easy to say, but God is saying, I'm giving you the power to come out of it. I'm giving you the power to realize that you do not have to get stuck in your past. The Apostle Paul says in the New Testament, he says, brethren, I count not myself to have, have apprehended, but this one thing I do, he says, I, I, I don't know where I'm going to be exactly, but I know where I'm not going to be. I'm forgetting those things which were behind. 
He used to be a persecutor of the saints, of the church of God. He used to put people in prison and have them um, beaten and flogged. And he went from city to city to have them imprisoned and to have them actually killed. And he says, I'm not going to get stuck in the past with my past and the things that I've done. And he says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. And brethren, I am pressing toward the mark. I am pursuing. I am moving forward in a positive direction. And we have to have that same mindset. We have to have that same way of thinking that I'm not going to get stuck in my past. I'm not going to get stuck in what used to be. He says, forgetting the former things. He says, I'm not even going to try to remember them. I'm, I'm going to focus on not where, where I used to be, but I'm looking at where I am, and I'm not going to even get stuck in the present where, where I am because my, my present might resemble my past. And he said, where I am right now, I'm not even going to get stuck right here, but I'm going to look forward to what's going to happen. He, um, I like how Tasha Cobbs sings in a song. She says, get ready for overflow. I'm getting ready to sing. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to see a new thing done. God says, I'm going to do a new thing in your desert, in your dry situation, in your dead situation, in that place where it seems like no, there is no life and nothing is growing. He says, I'm getting re ready to send rivers in the desert. Now, you know, only God can do that. Only God can turn a dry, desert, barren situation into a blossoming, flourishing, life-flowing and life-giving area. And he says, I'm going to do that in your desert area. And so when we talk about being absent in the presence of God, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, are we present are we present in the right now moment of what God is getting ready to do? Are we here? Are we hearing? Are we perceiving and seeing and understanding by faith what God is going to do? That's what faith is. Faith is seeing what you don't see. Faith is believing the report of God. Faith is believing that God is not only God, but he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. He said, it's according to the power that worketh in us. And as we, as we look at the word of God, let's go to a few other passages of the scripture so that we can see how God is saying, I need each and every one of you. I need all of us to be present as God gets ready to do a move, a mighty move in our lives. If we go to the book of Psalms chapter 73, the New King James um, Version says in verse 22, the psalmist is saying, I was foolish and ignorant and I was like a beast before you. He says, I was foolish and ignorant to think that some things that was happening in my life and that had happened in my past was keeping me from receiving or, or going to um, attain and be in the place where God was calling me to, what God desired for me and what God would have for me. He said, I was foolish and I was ignorant because I was thinking one thing while all along it was totally something else. Have you ever thought something was one thing and then you came to the realization later that what you thought was wrong? What you thought was happening, what you thought was transpiring was actually just your imagination, just was actually how you were feeling. It had nothing to do with God, but it had everything to do with your own feelings, your own ingenuity, your own thinking, your own understanding, your own perception. But what God is saying to us is I need you to see what you don't see. I need you to look past where you are, look past and beyond what is happening in your life right now. You said, but you don't understand. You don't know what my finances look like. You don't know what's happening on my job. You don't know that I've lost my job. You don't understand that my children have run away. My children have gone astray. My children are strung out on drugs. My children have gone away from the teaching that I've instilled in them. You don't understand my body is being racked with disease and pain. You don't understand. God understands. When man doesn't understand, God already knows. He knew 
our down sitting from our uprising. He knows our end from our beginning. He knows everything there is to know about us and everything that we will encounter. And he already knows the outcome, even when we don't see it or perceive it, God still knows. And he wants us to be present, present in the moment, present. And, and like I use the analogy, being present in school, you can be present physically. You can be present in a place, but still be absent. And God is asking us, are you present in your church? Are you present in your home? Are you present in your relationships? Are you present in your auxiliaries? Are you present when you come into the house of God, into his presence? The psalmist says, I was like a beast in his presence. What does that mean? I was foolish. I was ignorant. I was, I was like someone who had no knowledge of God. You know, the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, when he talks about um, the unbelievers, unbelievers and those who um, were against the word of God and those who did not receive the word of God, he called them beasts. He said, I wrestled with beast at Ephesus. He, were, he wasn't talking about dogs and cats and um, lions and tigers and bears. No, he was talking about people with a beastly spirit with a spirit with a spirit of attack with a spirit who um, would come up against the people of God the man of God the woman of God the children of God and he says that he was like a beast and when we compare the psalmist talking about being like a beast in God's presence he's talking about us not being in the place present to hear, present for God to speak, present. And you, like I said, you can be actually physically there and still not be present. So as we look at this scripture in the New Living Testament, we have to go back to verses one through five. And before we go back and um, dive into dissecting the scripture and um, just saying what God has said to us. Let's just read it before we take our break. It says, truly God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone for I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. He says, they seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong and they don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. Now this is the psalmist talking. He, he, he told us the sentiments of his heart. Is this true? No. Is this what is really happening? No. But this was how he was feeling. We can feel a certain way and still it not be true. It still not be what God says. And so we're going to break right now and we're going to come back and dive into this scripture some more and pull some more out of what God is saying unto us. But stay tuned. We'll be right back after this message. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Acts Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts Ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. That will take you to the main page where you will find a couple of options. You can quick give where no login is required. Simply fill in a few bits of information and it's that easy. Just add your donation amount and which fund, add your credit card or debit card information, 
Then hit submit and you're all done. There are even greater benefits to using Simple Give. And what could be better than having a simple way to give online? A mobile app for your phone. So go ahead, take out your phone right now and go to your Android Play Store or Apple Store. Look for Simple Give, all one word, and install. Open and begin searching for the church. Type in Agape Community Temple of Servants and select our church as it pops up. If you're already registered, just sign in. Or just as easily, you can register from here. Once registered, you can do everything using the mobile app as you can using the website. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. So join us every Sunday at 4 p.m. right here on VTN for our Words to Empower television broadcast. Welcome back. We're discussing today being present and not being absent. Not only not being absent, but being present in the presence of God. And so we are diving into the book of the Psalms, chapter 73. We left off um, with that passage beginning at verse 1 through 5. We're going to kind of skip around and, and jump um, to a few other scriptures in that actual chapter. But we read where the psalmist um, said, God is good to Israel. And he talked about to those whose hearts are pure. Then he says, but as for me, he says, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping. He begins to say where he was in his life and what was happening to him and how he began to, what we say, backslide, how he began to go away from God and God's commandments and not believe and not trust in God. He says, my foot almost slipped. He says, and they almost slipped because I got my eyes off of God. I got my eyes off of the prize. And I began to look at the prosperity of the wicked. I began to look at how they were flourishing. And he said things like he began to envy the proud. The proud, you envy people who are proud and boastful and arrogant and obnoxious. He said, I began to even envy those type of people. He said, because I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. Now they're wicked and, and they're prospering. And that's what messed him up is to see them prosper and his theological um, thoughts of, of how he believed things should happen to those people who were ungodly, it messed with his relationship with God. In verse 4, it says, They seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. He's just looking on the outside. He doesn't know if they're sick. He doesn't know if they're ailing. He doesn't know what they're confronted with. But God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And there are good things that happen to good people, and there are good things that happen to bad people, as well as there are bad things that happen to good people, and there are bad things that happen to bad people. So you can't categorize and say only the good people will have good things happen to them and only the bad people will have bad things happen to them. That's not the life that we live in. That's not the world that we live in. But when he began to look at this, he began to think that that's what was happening. He says, they don't even have troubles like other people in verse 5. This is chapter 73 of the book of Psalms. He says, they are not plagued with problems like everyone else. And that's what he was thinking. And remember, we read verse 22 where it says, I was foolish and I was ignorant. I was like a beast in God's presence. And when he said that, he was saying, you know, considering all that he said prior to verse 22, everything he said in verses 1 through 5 and verses 10 through 17 and verses um, 21, he, he then now begins to see that his theology is messed up. His thinking is wrong. He's not really present. He's absent in the presence of God. And this is the way you begin to think when you move from God, when you move away from God you begin to think not like God. When the Bible teaches us to put on the mind of Christ, he's telling us to begin to think like God. 
Yes, the Old Testament says his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts, and as high as the heavens are, so are his thoughts and his ways above ours. But then he begins to let us know, now that we're filled with his Holy Spirit, now that we're filled with his power and his presence and his anointing, he says, now I need you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And he says, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he says, think on these things. We have to change our thought life and our thought pattern, our way of thinking. If you think bad about people, guess what? That's all you're going to think. If you think that everybody's evil and out to get you, that's what you're going to think, and that's how you're going to process. That's the lens in which you're going to filter everything through. If you, if you think just the opposite, if you think this is a beautiful day, if you think this is a good day, guess what? It will become a good day. No matter what happens throughout the day, you'll be able to see the good in it. You'll see the bad, but you won't focus and put all your attention and, and, and just home in on that little thing that has happened, but you'll begin to say, this too shall pass. But God, God has greater. Yes, this has happened, but something good is gonna come out of this. All things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. When you understand what you are experiencing, you can, you can come to the point where you say, if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. And I may have been absent, but I'm coming back to him. I'm coming back into the presence of God. I'm coming back. And when he began to see this, he said, I'm like a, I was like a beast in his presence. Have you ever came into the sanctuary, to the holy place, into the, to the house of God, and you just sat there? You, you didn't praise him. You didn't thank him. You didn't give him glory. You didn't give him honor. You didn't give him praise. You didn't reverence him, but you sat like a beast in his presence. And I'm not saying you had to stand up or you had to jump and shout, but I'm saying you didn't reverence him in the moment. You were there. You were present, but you were still absent. You were present. The body was present. The purpose of coming to church was present. But when you got to church, when you got into the holy place, when you got into his presence, your mind was somewhere else. Your thoughts were somewhere else. Your heart was somewhere else. Your desire was somewhere else. And so God is saying, I need you to be present because I'm getting ready to do a new thing. I'm getting ready to do something where where the hearts and the minds and the, the thoughts of people all around you will be wondering, what is going on? What has happened here? And in the New Testament, as the Lord Jesus began to do miracles and go about doing good, the people began to say, we have seen strange things today. They're saying, we have seen mighty, magnificent, awesome, that's the King James Version, strange things. But they're saying, we've seen awesome and mighty, magnificent things today. And, and we, we don't understand them. But we know that the glory of God is being revealed in what he's done. Marvelous things, marvelous things is what the Lord wants to do in our lives and in our, our presence. And he wants us to be present to experience them. Have you ever been talking with someone and your heart or your mind was heavy or you had so much on your plate that, that, you're, that you could not even um, grasped everything that they were saying it was like they were talking and, and you might have had like a charlie brown experience where it was nah, 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 nah. you know when you saw charlie brown you didn't hear words but you just heard like you know sounds and so someone's talking to you and you don't hear what they're saying your mind has left you you have actually left the building you have left the conversation. You have left that person totally altogether, and you've gone to another place. Your mind is somewhere else, although your body is present. God is saying, I need you, mind, body, soul, and spirit. When the Bible says glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, he's wanting every part of us to be present, to experience what he's getting ready to do. And you have to make that declaration in your own life.
before this year is up, something significant is going to happen to me. Put your name in there. Something significant is going to happen to Jackie. Something significant is going to happen before 2019 is over. And I'm not waiting till December 31st on watch meeting service or um, New Year's Eve service. I'm not waiting to the end of the year to make a New Year's resolution. I'm not waiting to, till someone says, do you know that this and this and thus and such is going to happen. It, no, I'm, I'm now declaring and decreeing so that God can establish my words. He said, if we speak a thing, it shall be established. And if we speak that I will no longer be absent, but I will be present, you have to make up your mind. I tell college students all the time, you're coming into a new world, a new atmosphere. You're leaving your parents' home. You're getting in, into an area, an arena where you haven't been before. You must now make good choices, wise choices, and decisions. And one of them, the most, one of the most important decisions you're going to make while you're on the college campus is to wake up, get out of your bed, and go to class. Be present. And as simple and as easy as that sounds, you would be amazed at how many students refuse to go to class or flunk out of class because they are not present. Now we have to be not only physically present, but we have to be spiritually present. We have to be in a place where we have an ear to hear what God's Spirit is saying unto us. We have to be present to hear what God is saying and, and to see what God is doing. Now we want to pray that God blesses you to be present and to no longer be in that mode of absency. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for those who have heard this broadcast on today, who have a desire to get closer to you. You said if we draw nigh unto you, you would draw nigh unto us. So Father, we seek your mind, your will, and your ways. We want to be present in this mighty move of God that's about to take place. We declare and we decree it shall happen to us. Lord God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. We will not get stuck in the past, but we're going to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Lord, now, Lord, bless everyone. Strengthen, encourage, and uplift, and give us foresight. Give us an eye to see by faith what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We appreciate you joining us and we thank you and we invite you back at the same time, same place next week for the Words to Empower broadcast. Now, if you want to connect with us, you may do so at wte at gmail.com. And let me reiterate that you may connect with us at wte broadcast at gmail.com. And we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to pray with you. God bless you is our prayer. And until next time, may God bless you in Jesus' name. The Acts Ministries is located at 1423 Ingram in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock. Call 501-329-2055 or go to actsministriesonline.org for more information. We would love you to partner with our ministry. Please go to our website, actsministriesonline.org and find out how you can partner with us. For your gifts, please click on the Donate Online button or text the amount you wish to give to 501-302-4242.